Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to have two conducting paths, the same cross section, same length between the same two, uh, well, not sources, but we have a source of heat here and we have a heat sink on the other side. In the first example, we're going to use both of them being copper. In the second example, we're going to make one copper and one aluminum. They have different uh, heat conductivity constants. All right, how do we do that? We use the same equation. The power transmitted in heat through the conducting path is equal to the dQ dt. The amount of heat, Q stands for heat, T stands for time, so the amount of heat per unit time being transferred across the conducting path is equal to. Now, since they're made out of the same material, we can use the same conductivity constant, so we use K for copper, and since they're two paths that have the same cross-sectional area and they have the same length, we could simply double the area of one. In, a, in essence, that's what's happening. We could replace a double path by a single path that has twice the cross-sectional area, so it has the exact same effect. All we did here is simply add additional conducting path, additional cross-sectional area, and then we multiply the times the difference in temperature is the same, and divided by the length, which is the same. So the only difference here, since they're made out of the same material, same length, same cross-sectional area, we simply just have to double the area through which the heat can travel. So when we plug in the numbers, we get the following, 385 watts per meter times Kelvin. Now we have twice that, so times two, cross-sectional area, 0 0.001 meters squared, and the change in temperature, or the difference in temperature, 100 centigrade degrees, same size as Kelvin degrees, and then divide the whole thing by 1.2 meters. And the result of that will be that it's now twice what we had in the previous video. If I remember right, let's see my calculator, I think we have 32, so that makes it 64, 64 watts. Now let's do it for the case where one is copper and the other one is aluminum. How do we handle that? Well, we use the same equation, power equals dQ dt, but now we have two different coefficients for the conductivity heat constant. So this is now going to be the sum of the two, K for copper plus K for aluminum, because after all, what we could do is we could calculate this separately, we can calculate the heat transfer through one of them, and then the heat transfer to the other one, and simply add the two together. Since the difference in the temperature is, remains the same, this is kept at 100 degrees centigrade, this is kept at 0 degrees centigrade, we can simply add the two, constant co the two coefficients of heat conductivity or have two separate equations and add them together. So now we simply have a single area because we account for both of them times the difference in the temperature, all divided by the length. They're the same length. So when we do that now, we simply have to add the two coefficients. That would be 385 plus 205 watts per meter times Kelvin. And in that case, we have to add those together. That would be 590 times 0.1 divided by 1.2 and we get 49, we'll just round it off, and that's equal to 49 watts. <clears throat> so you can see, we have the same geometric shape, same length, same cross-sectional area, but one of them is made out of copper, the other one is made out of aluminum. Aluminum has a smaller heat conductivity constant, and therefore the total heat transfer will be less than compared to when both of them would be made out of copper. Also notice that this is a higher number, a greater number than if we had a single bar of copper because now we have two conducting paths, one made out of copper, one made out of aluminum. More heat will transfer than if we only had one conductivity path made out of copper. So we get a feel for how this works. Okay, stay tuned and we'll have another video for you with a different kind of combination.